My intuition tells me that a lot of average people just can't understand what Dr. Jung's work is all about. And so I want to talk about uh, the thing that first excited me, and that's this Myers-Briggs type indicator, and show you how you can use it in your own life this very day. Hi, my name is Skip Conover, and this is my second lecture on Jung for the layman. Uh, this lecture is intended to give you something that you can use immediately in your life. And it's going to be on personality type. And that's one of the fundamental ideas in you know, Dr. Jung's early work. And by understanding this lecture, which will only take about 15 minutes, you will have an understanding of how to relate to other people and how to use these ideas in your workplace. So first thing to know is that uh, Dr. Jung wrote a book in 1921 called Psychological Types. This is volume six of Dr. Jung's collected works. Using that as a starting point, two women Catherine Cook Briggs and Isabel Briggs Myers created a personality type test which is now called the Myers-Briggs type indicator. This is a very widely used indicator around the world in organizations, in corporations, in the US military, and it's extremely useful in understanding people that are in your life. So what I'm going to do is explain the four dualities that are found in the Myers-Briggs type indicator and how they work. The Myers-Briggs type indicator is based on um, these four dualities. Everyone in the world falls somewhere in each of these spectra. So everyone is either extroverted or introverted. Everyone is sensing or intuitive and somewhere you fall on this scale. You might be extremely introverted or you might be extremely extroverted. Now depending on where you fall on these scales will determine which of these letters which I've identified um, applies to your situation. So in my case I am INTP which means I'm introverted I'm intuitive, I'm a thinking person, and I'm a perceiving person. Let me explain how the four scales work. First of all, uh, the introverted extroverted scale. If you are introverted, you go to a party and you prefer to stay over in a corner and talk to one person or maybe two. If you're extroverted, you go to a party and you're in a big group and you're yucking it up and having a great time and you're a very public person. And there's nothing wrong with any of these positions on any of these scales, but it just defines what kind of a personality you may have. And when you understand your personality, then you can understand others' personalities and you can see how well you can interact. So the next scale is the sensing intuitive scale. On that scale, uh, a sensing person, you can show them a thousand trees and they will not believe there's a forest. An intuitive person, you can show them three trees and they will assume there's a forest. There's a big difference. And so a sensing person gets all the detail and in any work group you always want someone who first gets all the details so that you understand everything that's important to your situation, whether it's uh, with your husband or wife or whether it's with your, um, your colleagues. Any project needs to get the detail first. And then you need an intuitive person to understand what the global implications of your project are, whatever they are. And then the next scale is thinking and feeling. In thinking the next scale is thinking and feeling, and this is the classic dichotomy between head and heart. And so uh, a thinking person is a very logical person. Uh, they work out problems in a very uh, specific manner. 
in a very rules-based manner, whereas a feeling person makes decisions based on emotion. Traditionally, this has been split between men and women, with men being on the thinking side and women being on the feeling side. However, recent testing has indicated that men and women are really falling on this scale about equally on the two sides. So if you're a man, you might be a feeling person. If you're a woman, you might be a thinking person. Uh, and it's about 50-50. The final scale is judging and perceiving. A judging person, when they go to the grocery store, uh, they make a list and they go up and down the rows in the grocery store and they select things off the shelves from their list. A, a, perceiving, a perceiving person, on the other hand, they simply uh, go up and down the rows and select things off the shelves. Both types eat. There's nothing wrong with either type. But the point is that um, it's just a way you are in the world. And so uh, the thing about this is that based on these basic personality scales, one can determine whether you can have success in a marriage. One can think about how to plan a project or a mission of some sort. And it's very useful. And so in mission planning, uh, it's very useful to start with a sensing person, then have an intuitive person tell you about the global implications of your project, then having a thinking person give you all the logic about your project, and finally have a feeling person who will uh, figure out what the implications are for the world from an emotional point of view. So let's talk about the practical implications of this. If you have a marriage, if you're married, uh, if you have four of these personality types the same as your spouse, uh, you will have a boring marriage. There is not much difference between you, and uh, so your life is very boring. Uh, whereas if they're all different, uh, there probably is too much conflict, and then that's the other worst case. So the best thing in a marriage is to have uh, two or three of these personality types uh, the same. In organizations, it's best to understand how the planning process or the work group process really works. And so if we look at the scales again, um, it's best to have a sensing person get all the details. Then it's best for an intuitive person to talk about the global implications of those details or think about them. Then it's best to have a thinking person uh, work through the whole problem in a very logical way. And then it's best to have a feeling person tell you what the implications are for society. And so you start with sensing, go to intuitive, then to thinking, and then to feeling, and it's best to have uh, work groups that in, involve people with both all those personality types. And uh, I served uh, 23 years in the U.S. Marine Corps and was able to go to several leading schools in the Marine Corps. And in every one of those, the Naval War College, the National War College, and the Command and Staff College of the Marine Corps, in every one, they spent an entire day training us in the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator and these personality functions because they're very useful in your organization to de develop your mission. And that also applies to corporations, and that's why this MBTI type indicator is very useful. Now you can find the Myers-Briggs type indicator online or a simplified version of it and you can take the test yourself. Simply put MBTI into Google and you'll, it'll come right up. And if you get interested in this, uh, there are many books uh, 
that you can find about the Myers-Briggs type indicator in uh, contemporary bookstores. So I urge you to take a look at this. When I first started to study Dr. Jung's work in 1987, uh, I became fascinated with this MBTI test first, and I've been using it ever since in everything I do. And my wife and I rely on it to uh, keep the peace at home because we're actually, we actually have three types the same. We're both introverted, which means we stay home a lot. We don't have an active social life. We're both intuitive, which means that we can hear one another think, we're <laughs> in some sense. And uh, we're, we're both thinking, uh, which means that we're very logical in the way we approach problems. But we differ on the J and P scale. So she makes the grocery list and then I go, to the, I go to the grocery store a separate time and pick out the things that she missed on her list. Usually those are the things that I like to eat that she doesn't think are absolutely necessary in the house. But <clears throat> nonetheless, we, we both eat and uh, every so often she'll eat an ice cream that I've bought. <laughs> so anyway, uh, it's very useful to have this concept in your mind uh, if you're going to uh, have a happy life and an effective business life. The purpose of these lectures is to help average citizens understand the significance of Dr. Carl Jung's work and why it's important to you every day. And if you get interested in these things, uh, you can find lots more online about Dr. Carl Jung, about his writing, and so on. And in future lectures, I'll be talking about how to get into Dr. Carl Jung's work uh, in more detail. Uh, it's very interesting. There are many people that are fascinated with this work now. And uh, it can help uh, the whole world live, live better. So I hope that you'll pay attention to this.